This is now introspection time at the Indian Space Agency, the Indian Space Research Organization. India's workhorse rocket, the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, faced two back-to-back -back failures, a very rare occurrence for the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle. There was a failure in 2025, and now there has been a failure in 2026. India's Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle is a highly reliable rocket, and in 64 launches, it has had just five failures. But among all of this, there was a silver lining. Space tends to throw up surprises. On this particular launch of the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, the PSLV C-62, there were 16 passengers which were being carried. Passengers meaning no humans, but satellites and capsules. The main passenger was the Anvesha surveillance satellite made by the Defense Research and Development Organization, and there were 15 co-passengers. When the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle failed in the third stage of its performance, it almost seemed that all of the passengers, meaning 15 passengers and the kid capsule had all probably been lost in space. But now it has been revealed by the Spanish company which flew the re-entry capsule named KID that the re-entry capsule has been able to send some, transmit some data as it plunged back into the ocean. So silver lining that at least some part of the mission seemed to have found a successful ending. The Spanish company has announced that they have been able to get some telemetry data as the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle's fourth stage, along with its kid capsule, came back to crash into the ocean. It still did manage to detach from it and transmit some data. This particular uh, kid capsule was not meant to be a satellite. It was always meant to test re-entry technologies, meaning how it would perform once it goes to space and then it is brought back onto Earth. So it is not surprising that it survived probably the heat of the re-entry and was able to transmit some data. So at least the Spanish company can, can take solace that from, even from a failed launch, they have been able to retrieve something which could be of some utility to them. So space throwing up surprises. And the kid capsule send him back data. Although I must clarify that as of now, the Indian Space Research Organization has not confirmed to me that they have actually received any data from the kid capsule. But it is not surprising because the telemetry data was supposed to go only to the Spanish company. What experts at ISRO tell me is that the capsule was supposed to transmit data as it was coming down to another satellite in space, which is why it has probably been able to transmit some data. Now we await a final report from the uh, Spanish uh, uh, company to figure out what was the exact trajectory and how did this kind of a miracle happen. But at the same time, uh, there is a lot of introspection to be done at the Indian Space Research Organization. There was a lot riding on this particular commercial mission of the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, uh, and there are mixed emotions around this failure. One of them being that the chairman of the Indian Space Research Organization, Dr. V. Narayanan, uh, called the mission not expected on the lines it was supposed to work. Some say he should have outrightly said that the mission was a failure. But there are others who had a lot riding on this particular space mission, especially the Hyderabad-based space company, Skyroot Aerospace. They had signatures on seven of the 15 satellites which were being flown as co-passengers. They had an incredible amount of things riding on the particular PSLV C-62. I had spoken to the space missions director for uh, Skyroot Aerospace, 
before the mission had started and had asked him whether Skyroot Aerospace and he himself was jittery about coming launching on a PSLV on a comeback mission. And he said it was a uh, Mr. Vishal Lata Balakumar. He had told me that the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle is a highly reliable vehicle and they had full faith in it, which is why they put in not one, two, but seven of their instruments on this particular flight. So there was a lot riding, not just for Dhruva Aerospace, but also for several other Indian space startups. Uh, it is not clear whether some of the space startups had insured their satellites or not, and whether they would get some compensation from this particular loss. Uh, those details will emerge as we go along. But the space startups have kept a stoic pace, and they have all kind of given a thumbs up to the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle and the capabilities of ISRO, and all have said that ISRO will certainly bounce back, and they will also come back to the Indian Space Research Organization for launches in future. But there was also a certain group of experts, especially the defense space experts, who were mighty annoyed with this particular loss. One space expert told me that this repeated uh, failure of uh, the Indian Space Research Organization's missions, which are carrying strategic payloads or defense-related uh, satellites and issues happening around them and failures happening around them was certainly a matter of great concern. In fact, that particular expert even raised it to me that it should be probed where there was a certain sabotage happening on defense-related satellites being launched from India. It should be clarified that not all defense-related satellites have had issues. India did successfully launch the Navy satellite, which went up very well and is performing, I am told, according to standards. But yes, the Radarsat, the Anvesasat, a Navic satellite, all seem to have had back-to-back -back problems on launches by ISRO. But all is not lost. See, ISRO has several launchers. And the launch vehicle Mark III, the heavyweight Pahubari launcher, has done incredibly well for India, and it has had a 100% success record. Just 19 days before this particular PSLV C-62 mission, the launch vehicle Mark III had launched an American heavyweight space communication satellite into a low Earth orbit, into a very precise orbit. A highly successful mission by the Indian Space Research Organization. So the launch vehicle Mark III continues to have a 100% success record, but it is the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, which is considered the uh, workhorse rocket of the Indian Space Research Organization, a rocket which has given India interplanetary missions like Chandrayaan-1 and the uh, Mangalyaan missions to Mars, and done several strategic missions, and done communication missions, low Earth orbit missions, is now facing some issues. It should be highlighted that in the 2025 launch, it was the same third stage, a solid state uh, motor, which faced problems. Uh, ISRO did constitute a failure analysis committee at that stage, but the report of the failure analysis committee was never revealed to the public, which was the usual case for Indian Space Research Organization for its usual, for its earlier failures. Usually, an internal failure analysis committee uh, is set up which analyzes what has gone wrong. And the government also occasionally sets up what is called an external failure analysis committee, which, which has a membership of people outside the Indian Space Research Organization. We saw this happening in Chandrayaan 1, and that particular report was able to fix what is the problem. And then we moved on to Chandrayaan 2 and 3, and we have had success there. So ISRO certainly needs to come out and explain what has gone wrong, both in the 2025 mission 
and the 2026 mission of the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle because it was the third stage of the rocket, the solid booster, which has not performed according to nominal conditions. I'm sure a failure analysis committee is being set up by the Indian Space Research Organization, but I am reasonably sure that after this back-to-back -back debacle, which is a rarity for the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, the government of India will also set up an external failure analysis committee, which will go threadbare to find the root cause of this problem. And this is particularly important now because the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle is now getting into a stage of commercialization. The license for launching industry-made Polar Satellite Launch Vehicles has already been awarded to a consortium of Larson and Tubro and Hindustan Aeronautics Limited in Bengaluru. And it was expected that in 2026, the first industry-led Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle would have a first launch. But obviously, after this back-to-back -back debacle, there will be a question mark on that and there would be a review of the entire procedure. And finally, only when everything is all right, would ISRO certainly come back to the launch pad. But among all of this, experts say ISRO has to go back to the old days where there was a lot more transparency and whatever uh, went wrong was made public, was reviewed, and ISRO has a very extensive review process in place. And even the youngest scientist at the Indian Space Research Organization was earlier able to even question the chairman of ISRO on a particular technical issue if there was a need. It was an open review process and all the scientists sat together to figure out what had gone wrong. And then the reports were made public so that people had confidence in them. And this is what made ISRO, ISRO, and made reliability and responsibility at ISRO something which people liked. But of late, the review process at ISRO has seems to have uh, uh, gone into a little bit of a tizzy, and the failure analysis committee reports have never been made public in recent times. While there are three levels of uh, uh, different emotions which are playing out in the minds of the Indian space ecosystem and Indian scientists. One being that uh, ISRO behaved again like an ostrich by not calling it a full failure. The other is the space startups who are stoic in their, in their approach and saying that they still have faith in the system and they will come back to launch with ISRO. And there is this third community which is extremely anguished that repeated failures are happening on defense-related or security-related satellites and missions. And now ISRO needs to assuage all people that they have a reliable, robust system and that they would be back on the launch pad soon. I have covered ISRO for a very long time. I have seen worse times for ISRO, especially when the geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle Mark II was not performing well, and it was dubbed as the naughty boy of ISRO. But then the ISRO did a review, figured out what is wrong, and the naughty boy of ISRO, the geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle Mark II was tamed. And now it has had a successful run. It even launched the world's single most expensive civilian earth imaging satellite, the NISAR, the NASA ISRO Synthetic Aperture Radar Satellite, uh, in 2025, and it was a very successful launch. A satellite costing nearly $1.3 billion, and ISRO had faith in its rocket, and they launched it using the geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle Mark II, and it was a great launch. I'm sure ISRO will bounce back. They have bounced back from earlier failures. They learn, they crawl, they walk, then they run. And there is no other way for the Indian space ecosystem but to go higher in orbit, become more commercial, and have more launches per year. There is a lot riding on the Indian Space Research Organization. 
Prime Minister Narendra Modi has given them a great mandate, which includes the ambitious human space program to launch an Indian into space by 2027, to have a Bharatiya Antrik station by 2035, and to land an Indian on the moon using indigenous rockets by 2040. There is a lot riding on the shoulders of giants at the Indian Space Research Organization. This is a time for the Indian Space Research Organization and its worthy scientists to bootstrap, to think, introspect, and come out openly, admit what had gone wrong, fix the problem, and come back to the launch pad and give India and the world a successful launch, not just of the polar satellite launch vehicle, but also of the small satellite launch vehicle and the launch vehicle Mark III. ISRO has all the capabilities and the right DNA to be able to succeed even after a failure like this. But yes, back-to-back -back failures can de-boost the morale of the scientist. So it's important that scientists have faith in them and they bounce back from this rare debacle. India and ISRO, there is a lot riding on the space ecosystem as India becomes a developed country. So this failure of the polar satellite launch vehicle should be a learning step for ISRO. Since failures teach a lot and ISRO can certainly learn and bring a robust polar satellite launch vehicle onto the launch pad. Good luck, ISRO. I'm sure sooner than later, the polar satellite launch vehicle, the workhorse rocket, will be back on the launch pad and will fly into the sky with a successful mission. But before that, do a deep introspection, do a root cause analysis, figure out what is wrong, test, fix it, and then come back. India awaits a successful launch from Sriharikota by ISRO. In Hyderabad, Palav Bagla for NDTV.